Hello everyone. In today's lecture, we will talk about multi-substrate enzyme reaction. In most of the biochemical reactions, they involve at least two substrates. And uh, these reactions where two substrates are transformed into two products, they are also called as bye-bye reactions. And these bye-bye reactions are most often, those are uh, redox reactions or uh, group transferring reactions. So one example of such reaction could be where one of the substrate is AX and another substrate is B. This X group from A is transferred to B in presence of uh, some enzyme E. And the product formed, those are BX and A. So, and these bye-bye reactions, depending on the order of substrate binding and order of uh, products being released from the enzyme, they could be of two type, sequential reactions and non-sequential ones. So, in uh, sequential reactions, there is a formation of ternary complex. So, let's take example of a reaction where one of the substrate is A and another substrate is B. And these two substrates in presence of enzyme E, they are converted into two products, uh, P and another product Q. So in case of sequential reactions, enzyme first bind to A, A substrate and it form EA complex. Now this EA complex, enzyme and uh, first substrate complex bind to substrate number 2 that is B and it forms EAB complex. This EAB is a ternary complex. Now this enzyme E catalyze conversion of A and B substrate to P and Q product and uh, you have enzyme and product complex in form of EPQ. Now these products P and Q they are released from the enzyme and uh, this order of binding of substrate A and B could be first A could bind or B could bind but the product will be released after binding of both the substrates. So that's why it is called sequential reaction. Sequential in term of first binding of both the substrates and after that releasing of uh, uh, both the products. So that's why you call them sequential reactions. So there are two possibilities here for a sequential reaction. First A, a substrate can bind or B substrate can bind. And uh, in case of releasing of product, either P can release first from enzyme or Q can release first. That's why there are two types, random order sequential reaction, where A or B, either of them could bind first and uh, P or Q, either of the product can release uh, from the enzyme. So that's why it's called random, random order sequential reaction. In case of uh, second category, that's a compulsory ordered react sequential reaction, there, the binding of substrate and releasing of product is fixed. We know that only A will bind to the enzyme, for example, and then B substrate will bind, and then later on P will be released, and after P, Q will be released. That order is defined in case of compulsory ordered sequential reaction. The second category of reactions, those are non-sequential one. Non-sequential means uh, the, the sequence of binding of substrate and then releasing of product is not, not defined. There is an intermixing. Means first A substrate would bind and after binding to A substrate, the A is converted into product number one that is P. So P will be released after binding of substrate number one. And once the product one is released, second substrate would bind to the enzyme. Second substrate is B here. So then B would bind and after that B is converted to Q and Q would release. So you see here there is a mixing of binding of substrate and raising of product. That's why it is called non-sequential reaction. It's also known as double displacement reaction or a ping pong reaction also it is called as. So in case of random sequential mechanism, let's take an example of uh, 
two substrates AX and another substrate B and the product formation is BX and E. So two substrates they are transformed into two products. So in random sequential mechanism either e, uh, AX can bind first to enzyme E and form EAX complex and then the second substrate B can bind it will form EAX B complex. That's one possibility. Second possibility could be that uh, there may be reversal of the order of binding of substrates. Instead of AX, a B can bind first and after binding to B it will be EB complex and then uh, another substrate AX would bind and it will become the same ternary EAX B complex. So this central complex, ternary complex is always same either of the way substrates are binding to the enzyme in this uh, reaction mechanism. And now this uh, AXB, this is transformed into product EABX by transferring of enzyme basically transfer X group from AX to B here in the ternary complex form itself. And then you have the enzyme and product complex here, this one. Now this enzyme product complex dissociates during dissociation. Uh, BX may release first. If BX releases, E is formed, E A is split into free enzyme and the product number 2A. Or the order may be reversed again uh, while splitting the enzyme product complex. A product may release first. If A is releasing, it will be EBX complex that will be dissociating into free enzyme E and another product BX. So so the, because of these two possibilities of binding of substrates and releasing of product, this is called random sequential reaction. And uh, it is shown by this diagram is called Cleland diagram or Cleland scheme or uh, Cleland notation. It was given by a, an American uh, biochemistry professor W.W. Cleland in 1963. And uh, it's the same Cleland who also used dithytretol in order to reduce disulfide bonds in the protein. And that's why dithytretol, a reducing agent, that's also known as Cleland reagent because of this, because of the scientist. So in, uh, in this case, in random sequential reactions, the enzyme would have two independent binding sites. One binding site for A or AX, this one, and second binding site for B, this one, or for BX, this one. So there are two independent binding sites. That's why either of the substrate can bind first because of uh, uh, independent nature of the substrate binding site on the enzyme. One of the examples uh, of this category of reaction mechanism is creatine kinase. Creatine kinase is an enzyme which transfer a phosphate group from ATP to creatine and that leads to formation of phosphocreatine and ATP is converted to ADP, adenosine diphosphate. This is very important, uh, one of the diagnostic enzymes used in uh, muscular injury injuries or in heart attack. So this enzyme follows the same reaction pathway. Enzyme could bind to ATP first and then creatine to form enzyme creatine ATP complex or the order may be reversed. Creatine may bind first to the enzyme and then ATP would bind and again the ternary complex formation would remain same in either of the cases. Now this ternary complex formation, in this ternary complex, enzyme catalyze transfer of phosphate group from ATP to creatine. So you have uh, enzyme product complex in form of enzyme, phosphocreatine and ADP. And from this enzyme product complex, either of the product may release first, uh, phosphocreatine may release first, then ADP may release second, or ADP may release first and phosphocreatine is second. The second category of uh, 
these random sequential reactions is compulsory ordered sequential mechanism. Uh, in this case, the binding of substrate and releasing of product is fixed. But uh, because it's a sequential reaction, sequential reaction means first both the substrate would bind and after that both the product would be released. So that's why in this reaction, let's take an example of A plus B, two substrates, they are being converted into two product P and Q. So in uh, this compulsory ordered sequential reaction, enzyme, enzyme would bind to pro, uh, substrate A first, it will form EA complex and then this EA complex would bind to substrate number 2 that is B it will form EAB complex so in this case B cannot bind to the free enzyme so that's why it's, so, it's always bind to EA complex and that is because initially on the enzyme you have binding site for A only when EA complex is formed that uh, leads to change in conformation of the enzyme and uh, that uh, creates active site substrate binding site for second substrate B. So that's why B can only bind to A, EA complex. B can never bind to the free enzyme. That's why it's a compulsory ordered reaction because only A would bind first to the free enzyme and after binding to A to the enzyme, this EA complex become compatible to bind to the second substrate to form EAB complex and now in this EAB complex which is again a ternary complex enzyme catalyzed transformation of A, A, B to P and Q product and this EPQ which is basically enzyme product complex would dissociate first P would be releasing and then Q product would be releasing from the enzyme so this order is fixed that's why it's called compulsory ordered sequential reaction so enzymes will have binding site for only a initially that's very important point in this reaction mechanism only a can bind because there is no binding site for b on the free enzyme and binding site for b is only produced uh, when a binds to the enzyme and form a complex and these both uh, reactions they can be understood better, their kinetic parameters can be calculated using a line weaver bulk plot that we know that's also known as double reciprocal plot. That's a plot between uh, one, one by substrate concentration versus uh, one by initial rate of the reactions. So double reciprocal plot can be plotted for these reactions uh, by keeping concentration of one substrate constant and varying another substrate. You get uh, these lines which intersect each other and using this uh, LB plot, linear viewer bulk plot, the kinetic parameters like catalytic efficiency, Kcat, Km, Vmax can be calculated for these reactions. The second uh, Second category of the reactions is non-sequential or ping-pong reactions or double displacement reaction. In these kind of reactions, uh, the binding of substrate and bind, uh, releasing of product is fixed, but these are not sequential. Means it's not firm that only first two substrate will bind and then two product will be released later on. In fact, in this case, First, one substrate binds, one, uh, one product releases, and then second substrate binds and second product releases. That's why it's called non-sequential reaction mechanism. So, for example, let's take the same example AX, uh, one substrate, B is another substrate, which leads to formation of BX and A. In here, the X group is being transferred to B. So, this reaction takes place in two parts, in fact. First, AX the substrate number 1 reacts with enzyme E, this is a free enzyme, and form EAX complex. So this EAX complex, uh, in this EAX complex, enzyme catalyze transfer of uh, this uh, X, X group from AX to itself. So basically X is a small group, small living group from one of the substrate, which is uh, first transfer to the enzyme itself and enzyme it, it is EXA complex now 
which dissociate into ex and a so a is uh, first product here you see here uh, first substrate is binding ax is binding and after that uh, first product a is being released second substrate has not bound yet now this ex complex which is also uh, an intermediate stage that's also called as active enzyme or modified enzyme so this modified enzyme now binds to second substrate b here also b cannot bind to the free enzyme b is only capable of binding to this activated enzyme what we are calling here intermediate state or ex so ex bind to b and form exb complex now the enzyme transfer the same group X from itself to the second substrate B to form BX. In fact, first EBX complex which dissociate into free enzyme and second product BX. So you see here the order of binding of substrate and releasing of product is intermixed. There is no it is not sequential, and we can see the same thing from the Cleland notation also. Uh, AX will bind to A form EX complex which will convert into EX A complex that will split into product number 1 and EX activated enzyme activated enzyme bind to second product B form EX B complex and that catalyze transfer of X to B that form A dot BX and here this BX will be released and uh, in fact this is not a this is e e dot bx free enzyme will be released and second product px would be coming out of the uh, enzyme now in this uh, uh, b b cannot bind to enzyme e but can only bind to enzyme uh, when it's modified is activated and uh, the kinetic parameters can be obtained by, may, uh, by drawing line weaver bulk plot in the similar way like we have seen in earlier case by fixing uh, one substrate concentration and varying another substrate concentration you get parallel lines and these parallel lines they are used to calculate kinetic parameters for these kind of reactions. So one of the examples of a ping pong reaction is protein tyrosine phosphatase enzyme. Uh, this protein tyrosine phosphatase enzyme uh, dephosphorylate proteins they remove phosphate group from the protein and use one water molecule so protein phosphate and one water molecule they are substrate for these enzymes and products are uh, dephosphorylated protein and a phosphate group so these enzymes have basically four amino acids in their active site these four two aspartic acid one histidine and one cysteine first substrate which is a protein tyrosine phosphate that binds to the active site and enzyme catalyze a transfer of this phosphate group from protein to its own amino acid side chains and uh, the first product which is just protein that is released and enzyme become activated or is become phosphorylated in this case that's called phosphoenzyme intermediate now this phosphoenzyme intermediate is acted upon by a water molecule and this water causes hydrolysis of the bound phosphate group so the phosphate group released as a second product from the reaction in fact beside protein tyrosine phosphatase is uh, serine protease is also they follow the ping pong mechanism for their catalysis serine protease is like trypsin chymotrypsin pepsin and so on